It's a beautiful day here live now at Lucas Oil Raceway as we are set to go here in Indianapolis, Indiana, where the drivers are now set to go for tonight's action and showcase of the Citadel Rally Cross Racing League. Time to kick the action up and get things real serious around these parts. Hi, everyone. I am the Crusader Christian Try to join you guys here today as we get set to go for today's action here. We are lined up in position here for our first start. Luis Nunez, Robbie Lara, Laurel, Marcus Palacio, Paul Alexander Ebony. Alexander Poteet and Trevor Teal in this battle and in this fray here as we bring him out to the green flag and he number one. Through the start, Robbie Lorel already getting a good jump out of the gate here. Enters into the Joker. Out of the gate, or excuse me, Luis Nunez does as the rest of the drivers here just trying to stay out of trouble. Nunez with the early advantage here out of the first gate, out of the first runs they go. Drivers moving their way through the chains here, looking for some openings here, looking for some openings through the charge, to the ground they go. Every driver looking for their area, looking for their shot to hit up as fast as they can and hit as much speed and time as they can possibly bring to the table. Not so easy here when it comes to learning air, Lucas Oil Raceway. The track is a little bit more squared off, a little bit more centered off, but it makes for some interesting positions to really rally around, no pun intended and make for some impressive battles here throughout. Time limit set on these boys here, but this laps right now, we only got about four laps left to go here as we go on board with a little bit of Alexander Ebedee taking Marcos Palacio for a little wild ride there off the corner end. Ebedee right now dealing with Palacio there on that corner as they swing him right to the tight corner and tight ends to the jump of the off. The fish board number 99 here of Alexander Ebedee right now trying to hold the field down, trying to hold these guys back a few pegs, trying to keep this one on his line, on his turf. Look for an, looking for a wave around off the end. Straight shoots it to the corner here. Great little tack shot off the end. Luis Nunez right now, your race leader here with Robbie Laurel right now trying to find a way to catch back up to him. Has not taken the Joker lab just yet. Luis Nunez though has. That could play a factor here late in the run. And just like what we saw at Iowa Speedway last time out, that sharp 90 degree in swinging left turn certainly gets the better. Some of these guys, there's two of them down there that make things extremely difficult. We'll talk more about that here in just a moment. Three laps to go here though. Field continuing to fire on down. Nunez right now in a hot stake, hot battle here for his points race and for his championship hunts. 
He's trying to get everything he can to these guys, trying to get some speed off into the distance, into the corners. Coming right around now, downtown. They go once more here, and Alexander Ebony moving back behind. Alexander Brutif, though, looking to get right up at him as he enters into the Joker. To the Joker he goes. Takes a little bit of time getting through there. Doesn't quite get the speed of the run, though. Nunez and Lorella right now currently the top two guys hanging in this one as we're only two laps to go with one lap remaining. Solid field of drivers, solid field at play here and a really a testimony of control and persistence throughout. We'll talk about that points race here in just a minute as well and how tight, how close it is between these guys as they have entered into the white flag lap. The Logitech reigning world, ch world champion driver, Luis Nunez, number 14, currently looking to keep his pace, keep his distance ahead. As you see Lorel right now moving through swiftly in Kansas B, he's still finding some momentum and finding some challenges around the track. Alexander Poti now even moving his way through the field here as he looks for some openings. Center him off through the jump. You know, we've been so used to calling these guys down on the oval version of this track here. We forgot all about that in-style road course. It can make things quite a difficult ride and quite a unique little battle here as they bring him down to the checker flags. Robbie Laurel will have to go second to Luis Nunez as Nunez will bring home the victory in heat number one. Marcos Palacio getting put back into fifth. Trevor Teal goes sixth, so... Top driver is going to have to deal with some added pressure, some added content here, to say the least. Last chance qualifier now coming up on their stage. Let's take a look at heat number one results. So I'll pop this one up again here, for producers. So Citadel right across right now showing that Nunez, yet again, the Spaniard, bringing it home for another charge and a half. The, the American Robbie Laurel, though, giving it some taste in the, in the minds. The Germans bringing some love, though, from Ebony. And then, of course, American Poti taking some charges while the Argentinian himself, Marcos Palacio, firing hard. Trevor Teal just not quite enough speed in this one as we enter in to our next heat. This is the last chance qualifier. Uh, Badi, Poti, Palacio, Teal in this one. Set him off. Last chance qualifier time. It's green flag. Here we are. Down the first front, round the front straight away here. Ebony gonna go right for the Joker. Enters the Joker in, beautifully done. Takes one right at Palacio. Palacio having to fight right back at him. Those two had a war on their hands in the last race. Now they are gonna have to deal with each other at their best yet again. Trouble down there for the Subaru machine. Other 72, Trevor Teal, he is bouncing and jumping all over the rounds. These bigger cars are not going to be so easy and swiftly to get around the track. And Teal learns it the hard way. Smack dab in the wall protection. And the left front is destroyed. On Trevor Teal's car here. He'll have to fire it back from that end. Down the front straightaway here of the Lucas Oil Speed Raceway. Speed Oval we go. Swinging it in. Here comes Palacio down to the Joker. Throwing a hard one at Ebony. Ebony though imagining to get around him. Palacio was looking for a shot, swift kick in the arm, looking to take that one away from him with two to go. He knew he had to do it. It was going to get too far away. The times right now are belonging to the shorter wheelbase, the shorter drive. That field, that forward machine here of Ebony is making a great showing here with the fishboard camp. You can see that small, that shorter wheelbase, that short drive that Luis Nunez had earlier on too. That's what's making these cars so much better in his case for his mind, and he's trying to use that to its fullest advantage. Down to the white flag this time on by, though. Both guys have used their jokers up, so now it's just pretty much mono e mono. Does Palacio decide to stick the front end of that rear kit into that rear shot? Well, if he's gonna, he's gonna do a lot better than trying to catch him because Ebony is not giving him an inch. Last minute rounds around the track here, moving their way to the field. Poti needs to start figuring things to dial this thing up a little bit better. He's not gotten the speed that he really feels like he should get, nor really as well he should be getting. And he's going to have to figure it out swift, quicker rather than later. 
because now off of the final corners, the last chance qualifier will belong to the 99. Alexander Ebedee will take this one home. Palacio going second. Third goes to Alexander Poti. Trevor Teal did not finish. Warm-up time here on Beats and Racing TV. And let's take a look at our, at our race info here real quick in just a moment after our results. Take a look at this one right now, folks. B made this last chance qualifier results in the books. And what a showing here from Alexander yet again. Showing you why he's one of the top guys on that roster looking to take down the reigning the world the world championship caliber drivers. Palacio, though, it's not out of it yet. He certainly has been proven that, but he needs to get something figured out. That Subaru is not cutting the corners as well as I think he or anyone thought it should. That could be a factor late in the runs. Warm-up session now engaged here. We have about four minutes on the clock here for the guys. Luis Nunez gonna go out here and throw a few laps around. Trevor Teal gonna try to maybe figure out what's going on with that car he's actually got a question mark on the side of that thing i think he's i think he's confused on what's going on with this track too i think he doesn't understand it patrick jank saying okay this racing is pretty cool next driver saying good luck citadel drivers thanks for everybody for coming on board today as well so now race fans let's take it down to our track tech talk for the evening here and no this is not a cell phone no this is not a banana you see on your screen right now what this is is the actual lucas Oil raceway with stock rally cross style configuration as you can see, uh, if you want to try to determine it like you would any other track, it's got the half half end bank track of the oval itself. Then comes in the tight corners, tight positions, and a roundabout little areas with that side skirt, slide light, swinging dead left, 90 degree end turn. And just kind of as you come on to the phone part of things, that makes things very tricky and very difficult to say the least. Making for some impressive roundabouts and a little bit of tough little hard charges and all that. But I think the corner that really, to me, is going to get a lot of guys is always going to be the final corner before heading on to the back straightaway of turn three and four. You see it right there off that end. Once they get into that tipped area, then you have to carry all that speed and really bring it to full maximum potential if you want anything to go your way. It's an interesting little position. It's an interesting little get up, to say the least. Now, race fans, also, let's take a look here at our driver's lineups right now currently. With the way this is playing out, we've only got two races left. And at this moment, Marcos Palacio is at 146 in the points here. Luis Nunez, three wins to the, Spain, to the, to the driver from Spain to bring it home. Looking to take down the Argentinian by about 26 points left to go. So if he's going to do it, he needs to make sure that he counts and this A-main counts. And then he needs to have a solid performance and finish at the next event to knock down Marcos. But Alexander Ebedee is waiting in the wings here. He has that 108 at the moment. The only other driver out here that has any distinctive chance to possibly take home a season title, take home a championship. He's at 108 right now. Josh Clark would have been in that hunt too with 100, but he is not. He is uh, DOA at this point, or AWOL at this point. So we don't know where he's at. Palacio, Nunez, and Ebedee, though, the two, the three drivers are going to have to keep an eye on. That points right is very critical and crucial, as many of these drivers will find out as they continue to drive along. Really tight ends and tight, tr tight tracks, tight spots to be put into. This place definitely can get the better and the best out of drivers and make things very, very difficult. And we've seen it here time and time again. It continues to go. Final laps now being put up on the track. Drivers need to start preparing for the battle at hand. 
Nunez right now out of the warm-up session. Surprise, surprise. Got the fastest of the times here. Are laying down a 41.58 out of the crew. 42.08 was the second fastest. That was set by Robbie Laurel. And I think Nunez really kind of set that time because he knew if he didn't, he wasn't going to be able to showcase how much speed and control and consistency he's going to have. He definitely had a set of mark on these boys. And he, indeed, he did. The drivers have come to a stop. Now the time is here. We have entered in to the final bracket. This is the final closing out of these drivers' lineup here. This is time. This is the place. It is time to present to you the gridding order for tonight's A main event. Luis Nunez will pilot in the 14. Robbie Laurel in the 213. The 99 of Alexander Ebedi. Marcos Palacio, the 383, the 369, Alexander Bautit, and the 72, Trevor Thiel. Spain, Germany, United States, and Argentina represented in this lineup. And the field is down and set and ready to go, awaiting the approach of the A main start. We are ready for it here. As I get them going off for Pete's M Racing TV, it's time to go racing. Here we go. 10 laps of the distance will send them on their way. Down on the corner ends of the turn four is oval configuration. We bring him down into the first turn. Slinging it straight into the left. The Joker taken already. That was done by Trevor Teal in the number 72 as Luis Nunez leaves in his back pocket. Robbie Lurell trying to hunt him back down as they come through the first set of corners. Back to a corner they go here, jumping off the jumps they go. Nunez trying to hang in there. Lorel looking for an opening or two to get back at him. Palacio right in that mix. Palacio trying to get something going at Ebony here yet again as they bring it right through the corner here. A little bit of a better turn from the Subaru as Palacio got a little bit of a charge there. And Ebony, Lorel trying to get back at it though at Nunez here, but can't seem to find his speed, can't seem to find his distance and control. Car isn't quite there yet. Palacio down to the Joker. And throws another haymaker there, but does not quite get the speed to clamor at Ebony. Ebony is just completely outsmarting and co-classing him through these runs and through these momentum takes. Nunez doing much of the same. Trying to hopefully pull off a title win with Palacio being where he's at right now. He knows this is exactly what he wants. This is exactly what he needs to possibly have a chance at taking it home. Well, you can just see the cars just swinging the car, swinging these things right around town out of the gate and just bringing some pure smoke to the party. And it's not the kind of smoke you see on 420. This is the kind of smoke you see when you're dri when you're driving a, bu a bunch of hunk of tons of cars and machinery out on the track. Trevor Teal slamming it right into the wall, maybe trying to find a little bit of a wall bang end to swear that thing straight to the left more. I hate to say it, but iRacing doesn't quite work that way there, my friend. Not unless you're at Fairbury Speedway in those dirt stocks. Come at me there, boys. Eight laps left to go here right now. Nunez is still your race leader. Laurel right now is looking for an opening, trying to find some speed here. The American trying to take down the Spaniard here that so many have tried to do so often than not. Nunez has not been outclassed and will not be outclassed no matter what he does. He wants to continue the pressure and continue his drive to survive and make everybody be put on hold and put on notice. You can see these uh, these are not the manual shifters you usually see. These are sequential shifter cars. They're rally cross racing. The same thing actually that NASCAR we use in the next gen cup series. If you can believe that. And even the wipers do work around here. Imagine one though when the rain pops up, how well those wipers are gonna have to be used then and now. That will make things very tricky, very little interesting to say the least. Well, I don't know how the heck that 99 has been able to avoid Palacio all this time, but he certainly has been able to do so in then bit. Tires shredding up, starting to get a little bit harder on the charge, a little bit harder on the nose. If they are not too careful, it could be a very bad spot to be put into. Palacio looking for another opening here. Back at Ebony here. Not still. Can't get it. Take a look at the lap times here. He actually got some ground on him in lap number four. But he's only getting him in certain sectors. The sectors are not giving him too much chances, not too many opportunities. As for Nunes, well, right now here... <laughs> 
You won't even try to judge this one. That purple right there, that represents the fastest lap was laid down. Nunes sets the fastest today, 41.743. And that time around, look at this. My, my, Laurel got something on him there. Maybe there's something left in that number 213 camp. He's fighting, he's charging, he's going for something here. Nunes didn't keep him back all the way there, but is he going to have enough time to do it? You can see he is absolutely working the throttle, working the wheel, and making sure everything plays out exactly the way he needs it to, but he's trying to avoid any penalties as well. That's why you see them being very careful going around those bumps and those corners and the turtles. They cannot overshoot him. They can't overdo him. Honestly, if you've, if you've never seen a rallycross race, you may have been confused for a drifter's race or a drif or drifting style track racing. That's kind of what it's been like here for every time you see him coming off those final two corners before the heading into the tur oval turn. Well, whatever I said about Nunez giving up any time, I think I might have to be recorrected. Look at this. Lap 6, 41.1459. That, my friends, is smoking the competition, the tires, and really anything else that involves not being your name put into that team. Blaiso giving up some time here. He gave Teal and Proteal a little bit of a chance there. Didn't quite shoot to the gaps, shoot to the runs as well as he wanted to, and I think he knew it. Teal looking to hang on here. Poti going down low. They said, so let's this, see where this one can go. Not quite anything there yet. He's hanging in there, though. Marcus Palacio being caught up, too, as well. He may have shredded up a lot of the tires there on the asphalt side of things. Remember, these guys are switching from dirt to asphalt, so you go from that section, you got less grip, less run. That's why you have to be a little bit more careful and not smoother in these things than you ever do in oval racing or even road course racing for that matter. Dirt road, it's a whole nerve ball game. It's a very tacky little spot to be in because not only are you dealing with the slicks, but you're also dealing with just having to go around an actual road course while trying to keep the straightest line possible. It's not as easy as it looks. Ebony right now though, at this point, he looks like he'll have himself a field day and a half, kind of staying with Nunez in the points and actually getting one up on Palacio. But I'm going to say this right now. If Nunez is not stopped next week, watch out. I think this one might be his for the taking because Palacio, where he's going to finish, is going to cost him major points. The white flag is out here now, race fans, here with Lucas Oil. Indianapolis, Indiana, you have now witnessed the rallycross side of things from the oval section. And the Spaniard, Luis Nunez, is about to possibly pull off a big upset yet again showcasing really his talent, his speed, and control while some heavy hitters in the ranks of their categories and the ranks of their charge just could not get the job done. We'll bring him around off the final corners here, down the ends, into the final turn of the oval section we go. Luis Nunes, the 14, will bring it back home. He's your winner here in Citadel Rally Cross. Second will go to Robbie Laurel. Third, Alexander Ebony. And what a performance by all. Marcos Palacio may be sweating a little bit inside. He may be thinking a little bit twice about this. He's going to have to be careful. What a performance here for the driver out of Castellan, Spain. Nunez, man, he just cannot seem to be outwitted. He cannot seem to be outmatched. No matter what you do to him, no matter what you bring to his table, he just cannot be stopped. And that's exactly what he wanted. That's exactly what he needed. And Robbie Loyal <laughs> giving him a little love tap there for good measure. All right, race fans, let's bring it up now. Here is your final results. Luis Nunes brings it home for his Logitech G, at, G Motors, yeah, Atlas Esports. And, of course, right, re representing for the American side, Robbie Laurel still hanging in there, showing his talents. Alexander Ebedee and the, the German bringing it back home for Fish Sport Motorsport. 
And even Marcus Palacio bringing one home for Fish Sport. Trevor Teal goes fifth, and Alexander Poteet will have to settle for the back of the pack. We are now ready to talk to our drivers here and get them all centered up down on the track side of things. Time to listen in with them in just a moment. Well, we're waiting right now currently for the drivers to come on by, so we'll go ahead and give them a minute. I think they may be celebrating a little too much down there. We'll give them the countdown here. We, of course, give everybody a chance in the top three to come up and say a few words, say a few things before we sign off for the night. Race fans, again, though, if you did enjoy the show and you look forward to more racing and you want more rallycross action, oh, I will uh, let you guys know that we have something fun coming up for you. It's going to be down at Iowa Speedway. We're bringing the rallycross action back to you, boys. Get ready because these boys of the Moonshiners Rallycross League have something a little bit different they do. Let's just say that. And believe me, I'm ready to call and I'm ready to see it as well here. Brad Thacker coming on board here. Good to hear from you saying, come on, Alex and Marcos. Well, they definitely put on a show, put on a battle there, my friend, but didn't quite pull off the start and pull off the run there at the very end of it all. But give them credit for credit, too. They gave it a good showing for themselves, that's for sure. We'll give them one more minute, and then we're going to go ahead and sign off for the night here. So just kind of be aware of that here. And I have to clarify some. Actually, we will be back here at Lucas Oil Raceway tomorrow night. So I apologize in advance. I kind of messed up on my end. All right, so we'll go ahead and show our third place finisher here real quick. Alexander Ebony yet again popping up with the third place finish here today. Put up a great performance here. Robbie Laurel, talk about a debut race here for him and his crew. He comes away second out of the bunch here. Good showing from the American side here. And from the American side, we'll see what happens here. So we'll have to see if maybe that he can bring that one home and bring it back into the place. It was a good showing from him, though. And, of course, what can you say about Luis Nunez? Race win yet again. Pops away with the W. Brings it back home to his home country of Spain. This man is certainly something. I feel as though he may be the challenger to take it all home. All right, well, race fans, we have given the countdown. We give them the clock. I have not received word. I presume everybody is going to call tonight and call today. So we shall do the same. But uh, race fans here from all of us at PT Race TV, we thank you again for joining us, and we appreciate your support. We hope you will join us again when the green flag flies here tomorrow night here at Locus Oil Raceway. But before that, of course, it will be down at Hotlanta. We're going to Atlanta Motor Speedway. Witness the, X, the truck series go on down and put up a fight. It should be a good showing. But for now, thank you for tuning in. See you next time.